Hey, good morning guys. I just wanted to do a quick review of a dragon kit that uh, I haven't seen many of, so I guess that's why I thought I would do a review of it. That and last night I looked through the box and uh, I don't know, I guess it was a little more than I thought in the box, so that was kind of exciting. So, stay tuned, let's check it out. Okay guys, I just got to look at this kit. It's one of the kits I bought. Um, I had done a couple of kits, Revel kits, and decided that uh, I missed the hobby and wanted to get into it a little more. Especially the fact that there's being so much knowledge uh, shared that I thought I'll have half a chance of getting a little better. Uh, the kits and talking with Cohen when we started the uh, shadow build I mentioned this kit and he had said that some of the f uh, flak type uh, kits can be a pain in the butt and this very well may be one of them because it uh, well let's get inside and you all kind of start to understand why it could be that way. Now it uh, is a full box as usual. It doesn't need to have the Revell cardboard strap going across to actually hold the shape of the, the box as it sits in the store shelves. It will actually stay in the shape of a box because well it's thick cardboard and it's a very full box. Uh, I was kind of jazzed to see there's some photo etch in here. I assume that's a tow cable. Magic tracks. Which after doing those on the uh, shadow build, I kind of like them. Tedious to put together, but it's actually not that bad. And I don't do a lot of these reviews because, to be quite honest, I don't know what a lot of this stuff is even called. Then I did see this and thought, man, there is a very... There's just a bunch of parts that uh, don't get used. And the interesting part hadn't hit me yet. I looked through some of the sprues. It actually didn't hit me till I got to the bottom of the box. And that was the fact that there is a hole. In the kit. And I started looking around like most kits. Where is the top of the hole? Well, there is no top of the hole, it's, you put it together piece by piece. So I can see how that would become an issue or a pain because you get one thing out of square and from there on out, gaps are going to show and the build's going to start having issues. Yeah. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. I haven't seen a review of this kit before. Uh, one thing I found totally bitching about it is it has, well, at least what I think is a complete interior. It's got the driver section with transmission. And it also has the engine compartment behind that, which can be both can have the hatches displayed open, which... I will do, no doubt. Uh, 
and there is, I don't know, let's see here, well, we'll go through a sprue count at the end here. I, there's a lot of sprues. And, uh, it's the usual dragon detail, even these tiny, uh, God, I, hopefully the glare isn't screwing that up. I don't know what tiny parts those are on my finger right there. To me it just looks like a small X. Maybe some type of adjusting handle. Maybe. It almost looks like a valve that would be on a water spigot on the outside of your house. Big giant rivets. This is probably some of the upper hull, I'm thinking, with all of those rivets, I'm guessing it has to be. Um, maybe the gun pieces and a couple of fenders here. All right, gun shield, and maybe that's a piece of the hull as well. See what it looks like, the exhaust. For the engine, got a couple of guns here in the corner. That's one thing it did come with. Uh, oh, let me get this turned around. See the detail on the, the gun there. It's got a bunch of shovels and helmets and no figures. Uh, what looks to be some more fenders. More of the top of the hole or the shielding around the uh, Flat gun. Here's one sprue that kind of threw me for a loop. There is a, and this is one of the sprues that's not used, or at least the majority of the pieces. Got a couple of tires in there with a small trailer. Uh, and I, I didn't see a gun to be mounted on that, so I'm assuming it's probably a supply trailer most likely a uh, ammo trailer something something like that I'm guessing I didn't even see in the directions where you put it together so gonna have to see what leftover parts are there uh, and if you know maybe leave in the comments what this two-wheel trailer looking dolly chingaderas we we'll use that word there's a fancy word for it you know what that Chingadaris is, maybe uh, maybe let a brother know. We've got some of the uh, road wheels there. Uh, the detail is so crisp on these things. No flash. I'm really starting to get spoiled. I've opened up a couple of these kits and I'm definitely glad at the time. The kit seems so expensive compared to the others, but yeah, when it comes to quality, there's no comparison as far as the Revels. Uh, at least it, when it, you're talking their military, their airplanes, their... I, I'm sure the Hasegawa kits, I know they're expensive, but if they're anything like this, I'm sure they're well worth it. Well, here's the sprue of uh, equipment, knives, helmets, water canteen, shovels, yeah, I'm sure somewhere there are some that I have crew here somewhere that can be placed around servicing this bad boy because it is definitely going to be opened up. Something is going to tell me I'm going to wish I was keeping track of these sprues. Who was it that said this? Was it Panzermeister, I believe? Was talking about the dragon kits and said, I, I, at least he, maybe it was just the build he was working on. He, he wasn't appreciating at the time that one small part had, oh, 
one small part the size of a piece of rice had 30 kids. <laughs> I had 30 pieces to it. <laughs> you can start to understand that when you... <laughs> Especially on the artillery pieces. I got a kick out of the one little Tamiya one that did. And you start getting all the aiming dials and breech parts and yeah, that's a little little tiny pieces. Got some more suspension here. I do see on these leaf springs uh, that there is a seam that's going to be a pain in the ass to get rid of. Uh, but definitely doable. Uh, we've got a uh, fire extinguisher. That actual fire extinguisher looks really nice compared to the one that came in the uh, Yag Panzer, the uh, Shadow Belt. This one here is not near as chunky. The uh, straps and buckles, nice crisp detail on that in comparison for sure. Uh, this looks like to be some of the radiator and uh, belts and pulleys of the engine compartment. Uh, a couple of uh, antenna. They look very fragile. -y. Um, have no idea what those parts are. Uh, let's see your tools. Got some more of the vehicle tools there. And there again, compared to the uh, shadow build, uh, the actual metal holding the shovel together, the rivets in it, it uh, it's got a little better detail than that. And this must be the flat gun and gun pieces. So, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, ten, fifteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20 sprues, 20 sprues, so got some rivet detail on the outside of the hull there. And like I said, I just thought I would do a quick review of this because I like these reviews. It helps me decide if a kit that, uh, well, costs a little more than I'm but when you find out it's got this many goodies in it, it's, uh, to me anyway, it's well worth uh, the extra the extra cost. I like all the photo etch because it's I've only done very little of it so far, but it it adds the nice detail. Some of the kits are really expensive for the photo etch. I'm looking at some of the kits for the Tiger that's uh, on the way. That's for the Kursk build. I'll probably get one of the simpler sets for that. So I've seen a couple that are 70 bucks from at, what is it, Abert. Yeah. The kit didn't cost that much, so won't go that route. So, like I said, there's all the parts that don't get used, which will help fill up my parts bin for all kinds of scratch building possibilities. Kind of nice. And this kit was at Hobby Link, and that's Hobby Link L-I-N-C not the L-I-N-K with all the anime and Japanese uh, cartoony kitty flowers and yeah, that site I found, I don't know it's a pain in the butt to get around that site I think. Uh, Anyway, Hobby Link with the C seems to still have this kit the cheapest at $31. Uh, Dragon and Sprue Brothers were considerably more. And lucky model. 
when you figure out shipping was, I don't know, probably close to twice as much as anybody else, which that's one thing to remember. Shipping is not always shipping. <clears throat> I can find, um, and this is from Brookhurst Hobby, a place that's within about an hour, hour and a half drive of me. I can find uh, Vallejo paints for 75 cents a bottle uh, plus four dollar shipping 499 shipping I'm sorry I guarantee you that 75 cents a bottle I'm not going to be paying that if I walk in the store yeah and there's no way it costs 499 to ship that thing a couple of cities over shipping is not always shipping low model cost equals much more shipping cost Especially when you're dealing with the, yeah, never mind, another rant, another rant not worth having. Hope you like the kit. I think I sure am going to. I think it's one you don't see that often. It's all tanks and tanks and tanks and tanks and tanks a lot. <laughs> tanks a lot for watching. Have a good one, gents. Take care of yourself. See ya.